Here we go. All right, folks, commissioners, we are here for our uh, second FY24 budget work session. Uh, this evening we have parks and recreation, which includes the airport, the golf course, public landings, obviously parks and recreation. Then we have Department of Public Works, including general services, the roads division, solid waste, animal services, and water and sewer services uh, in the sanitary district. So this is work session number two. Uh, we, I know the commissioners had asked about a few other agencies um, they wanted to come in and present uh, economic development and tours, and we have them. They're coming in for coming in for a meeting update on April 11th at your county commissioner's regular meeting. So if that's sufficient, I would have um, Heather address those couple items that we talked about with uh, EDIF and her new um, office space she wants to rent out in the um, Queenstown Outlet Center, if that's if that's okay. And then the other one was uh, Department of Corrections, and I was going to ask uh, um, the warden to attend our April 13th work session uh, when we have the uh, Board of Education and then Capital, those two items. So if there's any other agencies or departments you want to um, come in for a, a work session or a briefing, we can try to squeeze them in on the 13th. We also have one other work session scheduled on the 18th of April that's if needed. Wide, it's, if needed, if it's needed. wide open, so we have that available too if we want to have that meeting. Okay. So let us know if you have any other um, departments or groups that you want to commit for a bit. Okay, with that, um, do you want to just jump right into the parks and recreation section? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the tabs are all listed and um, Alpha, so you don't have to look for a number. So we can go and let Nicole start the process here. I guess we're going to do each section, the operations piece, and then we'll do the capital piece for parks and then golf course and airport, if that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Nicole, um, right. We'll start with parks and rec, and that's on page 31 in your binder. Um, and also, Karen had um, printed out a summary of any enhancements that we would be going Oops. over this evening. So that is with the revised agenda for you as well. Um, and that's in the front of the book, right? It was separate. It was separate sheet. Right I on think the it's with yeah. the agenda that's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse it's me. just the ones that um, okay. relate to departments that we're meeting with tonight. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. That way everyone has those. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start on page 31 is a summary of the parks and rec um, expenses. And this includes um, parks, which is all general fund, recreation, which is mostly general fund, and there's... Um, some in the grants fund as well and then the three enterprise funds the airport golf course and public landings um, and this is just a summary total expenses of 8.1 million which is a six percent increase um, from this page the total general fund is 6.1 million and then the enterprise and grants funds were two million and then we go um, page 32 is the um, parks department general fund revenue summary and uh, let's see. There you go. And we increased from 390, or I'm sorry, we increased total of 526,000 up to 560,000, which was a 6% increase. Um, charges for services increased, uh, miscellaneous expense, and throughout a variety of accounts there. On pages um, 33 and 34, we have the Parks Department general fund um, expenses. And the total on page 34 was 4.9 million, which was a 6% increase um, from FY23 budget of 4.6 million. Um, there were three enhancements for the Parks Department. We have the pay machines at $40,000. Um, and two crew supervisor positions. Uh, the pay machines were included in the county administrator's budget and one of the crew supervisor positions uh, was funded. So those are included in the totals on pages 33 and 34. See salaries and wages went up 3%. Most of that was in the regular salary account. Benefits increased by 13%, uh, which was 128,000. Uh, most of that increase was in health insurance. Supplies and materials increased by 4%, almost 20,000. And the majority of that was in equipment operation, and that was for the increase in fuel cost. Uh, at the bottom, contracted services just had a minimal increase of 1%. 
And then if we go to page 34. Hold on, hold on. Sure. I just got a text that there's no sound, Bruce. We're working on it. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Again with the sound. <clears throat> so okay. So if you can sign while you're doing that. Okay. <laughs> 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 we're going to have to hire that for the next one, I guess. <laughs> Just, just for entrance into for, for parking. parking. It would be an hourly rate, just like um, at the landings where it's two fifty an hour. Um, this way, you know, we'll be able to at least recoup some of that. That money will go back into um, the public landings budget, where um, tickets um, revenue goes to, and where we supplement with um, rangers. So we actually bought the machines ourselves. We bought them. Not yet. Oh, we're using it. No, that's I'm a seeking permission. Proposed enhancement, proposed enhancement okay. the budget. That would be okay. an operational enhancement. So but but we were, didn't we receive from a group across the bridge folks that said that they'd bring the machines in, they'd monitor them, they'd do all that right. stuff. There was a group. And um, then they uh, would take their share and we'd get our share. But that's if we, um, if we did it every, you know, every single day. I, th I think right now to, to start, I think it would this be weekend. good just to do the weekends during the season and the holiday Mondays that, that take place there. And this is for and everybody. This is for everybody. Yeah. Well, we ran up to that buzzsaw before, haven't we, Jack? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I've got to yep. think about that one. <laughs> And, and, I still and got I'm, it hanging on my wall in my office. So, <laughs> yes, so you I'm do. Also, <laughs> number one. Yeah. You know, so it was a revenue say. generator. It was well over $100,000 in that one summer. Right. Most well, of it was out say, of county. What we hear is, you know, and this is, you know, um, kind of like a summary of what citizens are telling us, is that we don't go to Mattapique um, Beach on the weekends because everybody else comes in. Mm -hmm. So if that is, you know, the true case in point, then the fee is only attached to non-county residents. So your citizens aren't being impacted by the fee that, that we're proposing. Well, that's what we were looking for too, so. Yeah. And what's the fee gonna be, how much a day? Two, it would be 250 per hour, just like our other um, okay. uh, lane fees okay. are. So we'd be consistent across the board. Mattapeak and um, the Mattapeak overflow, not terrorist Mattapeak. <clears throat> and, and I know some people say, you know, there's a trailhead at, at the overflow parking, so we would have probably between eight to ten spots that would be designated just strictly for. How are you um, going to control that? Yeah. I mean, we, we would sign them for that, and, and obviously people are going to take advantage of They don't have a bike rack on there. We'll just tow them. What do you think? <laughs> Wait, what it, you're saving how many spots are being saved for what? Probably probably 10 to, 10 to 12 spots. For, for people wanting to use the trail. As a trail. Okay. Okay. And sure. that'll turn over. I got gotcha. you. Know, a lot quicker. If not, you know, if they still want to use that, you know, they have the ability to pay. How do you do it? So how, is, how would that even work, Hourly? Just give me a run through. I pull in there, and I get a ticket, and then when I leave... It, so it's, it's you a get gated. a ticket and you get it for two hours, so okay. say five bucks if I get there at 10 o'clock in the morning. So it's like hourly parking at the airport. Correct. So so actually, if you, go, if you go downtown anywhere, uh, yeah. the pay mobiles, they got them everywhere. You just stick your credit card in, you get a ticket stick in your machine. Right. right. And it covers you for, I don't know, they usually have a maximum of three hours or something like right, that. Right, but this, you're, you're going to get the money on the way out. No, you do it on an app front. It's on our app. That's an app. You, you so the app knows when you leave and knows how much to take off your you, credit card? You would card? actually get a paper ticket that would go into the front part of your car right. to your, your, your dashboard or something. Well, dashboard. when it's running out, your app will alert you. Then you would just re-up it. If you're down on the beach, you would just re -up. You don't have to go back to your car. It'll just continue to re-up it. Just I'm, keep putting money in. I'm not sure if we're getting that one, but it's just like we have at the landings. It works now at the landings. And when we went to the $2.50 per hour, it made a significant difference because you got a, a more honest use of, of, of usage. Because before it was ten dollars for twenty four hours, right. and you get people that would come in, you know, uh, you know, seven o'clock at night, and they wouldn't leave until you know the next day. But now, you know, you get to see that exactly what that turnover is. The rangers, when they're going through on their patrol, they can where your highest through. volumes are. You can see exactly. Okay, at twelve o one, this one's going to expire. I come back at twelve o two. They right. didn't mm -hmm. write them a ticket, just like anywhere else in the city or, or even here at the landings. So it's, you know, it's, it's not a new concept. The only new part about it is it's going to be at those two sites. Should you guys improve it? <laughs>
I'd rather go with the ones that use the app because if you're down at the beach, you don't have to keep coming up every two hours. And that's that's quite ticket. a walk from the beach back to the. How's it work on the landings if you're out on your boat and you're out for more than two hours or whatever the time limit is? It's only at the piers. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Yeah, you can get, you can, what is it, James? You can get 12 hours max. Uh, I think you can get as many as you want to type in there. Yeah, I mean, you can just, if you want to be there for five hours, you can pay for five hours to be there. Mm. The terrapin, last, terrapin still, last thing they want to do is come back with boating and realize they got terrapin, terrapin is still not a, a beach. It's used as a as a nature preserve. And we'll still have staff there in the summertime to to police that to make sure that folks are still utilizing that in the in the way that it was intended when it was built. And we've done that the last three or four years, so we've kind of you know squashed that down significantly from where it was four years ago. Jack, I think this was this an initiative of Chris's? Just, you know, since he's yeah. <laughs> this was a Corcorino initiative. I think it's in his district. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to concur with that. <laughs> All righty. That's going to be interesting. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Keep going? Yeah. Yes, All right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we were on page 34, other charges. Uh, we see there's a $10,000 increase, which was 7%, um, and the majority of that was in electricity. Uh, and I think that was for the additional lights at a variety of parks, right? Correct. Okay. And then under capital outlay, the increase of 40,000 is for the pay machines that were funded as an enhancement. And then we go into recreation. Um, so we can look at recreation and then we'll do the capital projects for both parks and rec together. On page 35, we have recreation a summary of the general fund revenue and expenses. The revenue increased by 7% from 217,000 to 232. Um, all of that in charges for services. And then if you go down um, on the page, the expenses increased 6% uh, from 1.1 million up to 1,178,000. And salary and wages increased 6% um, by 33,000. Majority of that was in regular salaries, which increased by 28,000. The benefits increased by 31,000. Um, almost all of that was in the health insurance expense. There was so is that just people qualifying now? Right, different staff that just take maybe family coverage instead of individual, um, just the more expensive health, okay. health insurance. Because that seems to be a trend in flipping through this. Mm -hmm. As we have new staff, um, maybe they're just electing a different health insurance plan um, and the cost, or it's an increased cost. And there was no change in contracted services, um, other charges, it was a $5,000 increase, and the majority of that was in bank service uh, related to online payments. On page 36, we have uh, supplies and materials for recreation. We saw a $6,000 in or decrease there, uh, mostly in program supplies and materials. And then capital outlay, there was no change uh, in the budget requested. Any questions on recreation operating? Um, page 37, we have a summary of, there's two grants for recreation, the Summer Days Grant and a, just a general recreation grant. Uh, the budget remained the same for those two, a total of 55,000. That's in a separate fund outside of the general fund. And then Karen will go through the capital projects for Parks and Rec. Might be easier to just take the pages 15 mm. through right and 20 um, out of the binder that way we're not flipping back and forth and I'll go ahead and and then we also we also will go over the other enhancements um, but we can look at capital first and there was do you know what page the summary was on the priority list um, that might be helpful <coughs> 51 51 okay as for parks, yeah, the for parks. parks. Is, there okay. a, is there a waiting list at our airport for tie downs and hangers and all that? Okay. <clears throat> so on page 51 in the 
um, binder is this summary for the parks projects um, in order of priority. Uh, the only thing is the pay machine is on here and we moved that to operating. <coughs> so the total um, for parks for FY24 was $3.2 million. Um, over the next six years is a total of $30 million. I don't know if there's any in particular that you guys want to go over, um, some of the larger projects, or if you just want to run down <coughs> each one. How do you guys prefer to go through these? Where are you? What page are you on? Page 15, I believe, right? Steve, uh, do you know at the top 18, of your head the improvements to our dugouts, what the total cost on that was? Around 30. Really? <coughs> Thank you. And there was three, um, if you look on page 51 on the priority list, there was three that were not included in the county administrator's capital budget. And that was numbers 10, 11, and 12. Um, so those were not included in the proposed county administrator's budget. Hmm. 12 was the, oh, yeah, 12 was the artificial turf fields. We moved that out a couple of years. Right, right. It is we in moved the budget, that out. It's out in yes. the out years. And those are artificial turf fields for White Marsh, White Marsh Park. So we split those up and put um, two and a right half million in 25 and, and two and a half excellent. million in 26. And then the only project for recreation, um, I believe, is in the out years. That's on page 17, and that is for a new rec center. So there's 100,000 in FY25 and 10 million in FY26. I thought we were doing, we were funding the budget or the uh, study for this cycle. No. We initially put it in for. I thought we initially put it in for 24. I thought it was in for 50 for a study for. Yeah, I think it was originally submitted 100,000 and 10 million for 24 25. That was right. pushed out one year as well. I mean, we can adjust that if you want to do the study sooner. Um, that's something we can certainly discuss, review. Yep. Food for thought. Yep. Okay. But that's what the study was 100,000? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we'd get too much with a $50,000 okay. study. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions on capital? Any Do projects you want to go over go any of them? Well, I mean, I, 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 I sat in on just the rest of the guys didn't sit in on, our, on all these, so if they have questions, I, I know what all these are. Yeah, these were reviewed heavily by the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Uh, Commissioner Moran sits on that committee as, as a liaison, and so he, he has had a chance to look at this. Uh, and the advisory board's the one that detail. Yeah. Are you increasing the size of that, um, the hockey rink? Are you no, just, it's no, be the same, same, same dimensions, yeah. just new, new pavement, new boards? Are you going to, there's going to be restrictions on that use? That's Who can use it? I mean, it would be an open facility, and people can also rent it out if they'd like just to secure their time as they get closer to that particular season. Okay. The new board system will take the cross balls. The, old, the ones we have now will. That's the All right. You say will or will not? It will. It will. <laughs> once once it's. Boards, so okay. Any questions? I'm good. Good? Mm -hmm. On the cap? Well, that was painless. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So far. Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to go over the other two enhancements for parks? I think you had two positions. Do you want to go over those? Yes. One's funded. One, One is funded. funded. There was. Um, it was a park ranger supervisor that wasn't, or what? It was not. It's on page 45 in the binder, right. um, the two positions. The ranger was not funded.
they were two, yeah, two supervisory positions, one a crew supervisor for the Rangers and then a crew supervisor for their general maintenance crews, one of which we funded, I funded. And then the other one was, uh, the other enhancement we talked about was the pay machines, which would go in the operations budget as well. So the crew supervisor wasn't, the Ranger wasn't? Was not funded. And, and why that, why they ask for that? <clears throat> By that, as that program begins to build up, right now we've got, um, we've got two full-time um, Rangers during the season. We're anticipating on having about 15 um, seasonal Rangers. They're also not only doing, you know, park patrols during the year, but now we've also incorporated them into doing planning. I mean, I'm sorry, programs with recreation. So, you know, their, their duties are expanding more as a, a Ranger position should and so, who, should. Oh, so who oversees those right 15 now, seasonal right now james and chris jones split it and it's more it's leaning more heavily on james um, because there's a lot of the in enforcement that goes with the landings as well um, so you need you kind of need that in between person who can be on the ground with them and you know assisting and, and setting up their schedules and the day-to-day -day stuff you know in addition to what james does so in the summertime so we'll have 17 We're park hoping. ranger people oh, yeah. okay so in the summertime um, say on the weekends how many will you have working at one time um I'm, I'm, I'm probably getting i'm going to um, make a point we got two shifts, so the, the, and what we're going to do is we station them now to be at um, at Mattapeak, um, at Terrapin, and then Ferry Point as well, in order to to make sure that those facilities are being utilized right. So you basically you're going to have two people per schedule, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 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 On a Saturday and a Sunday. Twelve two on shifts Saturday. Of, twelve on Sunday. So two shifts of six. Right. As you're doing two, two, and two at each site. For an eight-hour okay. shift. Okay. All right. So it's in addition to, you know, and then we'd have our, the ability of our full-time rangers to, to go around and see other sites as, as well. Hmm. It's a lot of people because, to be looking yeah, after. Well, what I, I, I is that we're less park staff overtime. Yeah. I, I, the only reason that I ask, and and I and I don't know if not funding that, and I don't know how <laughs> the other guys feel about that, but. Um, you know, we're during the summertime when it's busy, that's when we're under the microscope the most by our public and by the folks that visit our county. So if, it, you know, if we have that many people working, we really need, we're really not going to get a second chance to make a good first impression. So, I mean, I guess that's a conversation that maybe you have with James about his ability to manage all those people on busy weekends. And do we really need to bring a ranger supervisor on? Here's the, if we don't have the, the rangers and we don't have the supervision that goes with, because we all know that staff needs supervision, at, no matter at, at what level. I was going to let if, you say that, but I was thinking it. <laughs> so in the meantime, in, in the last four years, we've had park staff and some recreation staff that has been filling in. So in addition to them working their 40 hours during the week, they're picking up another 8 or 16 hours on the weekend, you know, and you're getting burned out. You know, they, the first couple of weeks are great. They, you know, everybody loves a little extra overtime and, and stuff like that. But at a certain point, you know, now it's mandated because we want to make it fair and equitable to all staff to participate in that. So we're just not picking on, you know, one person to, to work and pick up those hours. You know, now we've, you know, we're getting to into August and September, they're getting burned out. If they as they survive that now by the end of the year now they got to burn all that comp time so that means that's less work that's getting done during that September October November December time frame how many funded full-time positions do you have that are open right now um, well two and I'm waiting on um, that was the last that's it that's it okay all right. well, I'm, I'm sorry, I take it back. I've got one person just left, so I'll have one vacancy. I keep two people tied up there. That's what I'm saying, responsibility. At parks or less? Parks. Yeah, but that doesn't help us because we're the ones on the, on the ground. And that's, like you said, we get hammered. Okay. Right. Anybody else? Bueno? All right. Moving okay. on. Okay. We'll move on to All the right. airport. 
Mm -hmm. um, that is on page 38. We're talking capital, right? Oh, no, airport no, 30, operating. 38. Yes. Go back. One off later. Good? Yeah, I mean, look at the increases. They're so minimal. It's not a large operation. Well, I like the same amount of money. I mean, it's, yes. Um, on page 38, we have the airport, um, which is an enterprise fund. Um, so it's not included in the general fund. The airport did not have any enhancements for the FY24 budget request. The request was an increase of 15000 from last year, total revenue and expenses balance at 674000 an increase from 659 from last year, which was 2%. Um, if we look down at the expenses towards the bottom of the page, other charges um, was a minimal increase from 289000 to 291. That was less than 1% increase there. On page 39, um, at the top, we still have other charges um, and just a few small increases there. There was 2400 for non-capital lease payments, um, and that was to lease a fuel truck. Um, supplies and materials was a 2% decrease from 149000 to 146000 Salaries and wages increased by 10,000, which was 70, or I'm sorry, 7% uh, from one, 133 to 142. All of that was in the regular salaries. Contracted services increased by 13%, which was 6,000 from 45,000 to 51. Um, throughout the different accounts, repairs increased and for both equipment and buildings. Uh, the benefits just had a slight increase of 1700 from 40500 to 42000 um, And again, this is the enterprise fund, so it has to balance, and the revenues and expenditures both equaled 674000 And you might as well do capital too, right? Mm -hmm. And the capital. Any questions on operating on that? That's pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. so. All right, the total capital for FY24 for the airport um, is 185000 and over the next six years is $9.3 million, um, the majority of which is the South Apron Design and Construction and the North Apron Expansion, um, which is 90% federal funding, 5% um, state, and 5% county. All right. So that 185000 is how much is? So that's actually a project that I think um, Lee Edgar will sort of manage. It's for um, the hangar maintenance. I don't know if there's any. Yeah, it's basically for a new roof for the main. So that's no, none of that's grant. That's no. okay. The big blue hangar. Yeah. The big blue. The big blue. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. It's uh, it's overdue for some work, I think. Quite overdue. Yeah, quite overdue. That's the old, the oldest hangar. Yes. When is the uh, runway project going to start? It was supposed to be March 20th through June 6th, and then they couldn't acquire the needed supplies, so it's indefinitely postponed. Indefinitely? Indefinitely. As that means they don't know when they're coming. Correct. We is, don't. Now, how does that work with the grant? And how does, I mean, is that something that someone we hired, or is that someone who had to go through the, you know, the process as far as federal? Or the, Both. The, um, uh, so they are held to the price in their contract. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's mainly electronic devices and for the lighting, for the runway improvements, and maybe you can elaborate on what they're, it's not the asphalt, it's the... No, it's some a, of they the, own their own asphalt plan, it's not the asphalt. Okay. Is it programmable? Who's, or no, it was uh, Meyer. Alan Meyer. Oh, Alan Meyer, that's right, that's right. Nine million dollars or something, wasn't it? Uh, like 8.7, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Indefinite. We're hoping for the fall, but I haven't gotten confirmation. Hmm. Indefinitely. Thank God it's grant money. Anybody have any questions on that? Short and sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The golf course is next, and that's on page 40. How long have you been down there at the golf course? 
17 years. Is it 17? Yeah. Good Lord. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. I thought you came <laughs> on by the same time I did, but 17, you definitely got me beat. I have kids that work for me that have kids that are playing down there <laughs> that are in junior golf camp now. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. It's all good. It's not, right. <laughs> <laughs> not that old. <laughs> Okay, page 40 and 41, we have the golf course, uh, which again, like the airport, is an enterprise fund, um, and there's no enhancements for the golf course either. So the golf course total revenue and expenses increased by 8% from 627,000 in the FY23 budget to 679,000 in the FY24 budget. Um, for the revenue, the majority of the increase was in charges for services, um, in golf fees and rental fees. Um, a little bit of an increase in the driving range fees as well. Um, you'll see the transfers in are budgeted at 186000 which was an increase. Um, but the last several years, the golf course, the revenue has exceeded the budget. And in 22, uh, we didn't need any general fund um, transfer for the golf course. Excellent. It is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that going. I retire. I'm out of here. There you go. <laughs> Took me 17 years. I'm gone. <laughs> Uh, we'll see the expenses total is also 679000 um, and the contracted services increased from three hundred twelve to 339000 uh, That was 9% increase, and the majority of that was in the maintenance agreements, and I think um, that was based on contractor increases, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, salaries and wages increased by 8000 to 159000 and that was in both part-time and regular salaries. And then if we move over to page 41, other charges increased um, by 9000 It was 12% increase, up to 85000 for FY24, and that was spread throughout um, different accounts there. There were some lease payment increases. Um, as well as some other increases in bank service and debt service as well. Supplies and materials increased by um, 8%, which was 5,000 from 67,000 to 72,000. And that was in mostly in resale merchandise. The benefits increased by $2,500 from 20,700 to 23,000. And that was throughout uh, the variety of the benefit accounts. That's all we had for golf course operating. And we can go over golf course. I think there was one capital project. Yes. So the Blue Heron cart path is on page 15 of the capital budget summary. The amount for FY24 is $275,000. No requests for future years. Eric, you want to explain what that what that is and that, that additional trail amenity down at the there? old nine? At the old nine. Yeah, that's holes one through nine, which we're doing the construction on right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, seven thousand feet at a seven foot wide cart path. Um, the it was broken down into from Brambles gave me an estimate on both of them, so it was broken down into doing the sub base stone and then paving on top. So. It'll just enable people to be able to play the holes one through nine when it's wet, rainy, mm -hmm. and they can't get on the other, you know. Right. So it kind of gets jammed up on one side, or anybody who wants to play 18 has to play the same nine twice, which sometimes is not appealing um, for a lot of people, or it gets busy and gets you know, stacked up on one side. Yeah. So, and I think with the construction and the improvements that we're doing on the, you know, the original nine, one through nine holes, we're going to get a lot more requests for play, and I want to be able to accommodate them. Good. And the driving range keeps ticking up with usage? It, yeah, it has been. I mean, we started off with, I think we did, I don't in the previous year was, I think we killed killed it. So mm. I think it was only budgeted to make 30, and it went to 49,000. Yeah. So that's great. Good. That yeah. is very Every good. afternoon, it's you know five o'clock after work. It's, mm -hmm. it's just it's crazy down there. Mm -hmm. We're pulling in that gravel parking lot, going, no way. <laughs> I just I like, appreciate that. Oh man, pavement's so much better. Oh my god. <laughs> Nobody stole the sign recently, right? 
Yeah, we've gone through a couple of those Big Daddy Drive signs, I guess, down there, I've heard. It's yeah, a popular name down is there. It, did we put a new one back up, or did we just give up on it? Well, number uh, three, uh, right? Is uh, it the third uh, one or fourth We're one? at least probably on four. I think yeah. this one's metal. I think it's bolted down. I think there's bob we just, around can we it. a capacitor to it. <laughs> I was just, just going to say, let's, 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 that let's put 400 volts attached to it. Well, I've got a trail camera. I was going to put a trail camera in the woods and see if I could catch anybody messing with it. But, <laughs> Well, let's just go ahead for anybody that's listening. There's a trail camera yeah. on that yeah, sign, and you it. will be caught. Smile. It shoots. It's you know, a smile. It shoots BBs at you when <laughs> it goes off. So watch out. Yeah. All righty. Does anybody else have any questions? <laughs> You're good to go. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Eric. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Oh, James. The pressure's <laughs> on, big man. Come on. Good to see you all. Absolutely. We have public landings operating on page 42 and 40. Well, it goes through 44. Okay, so public landings is also an enterprise fund, um, and there are no enhancements for public landings operating um, as well. Both revenue and expenses, uh, the request was 593,000, which was a 2% increase from the FY23 budget, uh, so $10,000 increase. If we look at revenue, it um, decreased from, I'm sorry, the charges for services decreased from 530,000 to 525, um, and then there were some increases in some of the other revenue sources, such as boat and slip fees, um, Mattapeak user fees and some of the miscellaneous revenue sources. Some of those numbers are down. Is that, what do you think that's from? We had a nice COVID bump on uh, <clears throat> the fishing piers. Uh, yeah, and, sure, okay. Uh, yeah, outdoors, that's right. And, yeah, uh, okay. We appreciated that, but we were trying to be realistic. Okay, yeah. great. I think there's a little bit of a correction yep. mm -hmm. to take place. So we figured we'd bite it smart instead mm -hmm. of wishful thinking like it was uh, we did incorporate the recent fee increases for calendar year 24 I don't know if you were here that evening um, in February we we're um, you were on assignment slip you're on assignment, you're on assignment. Yeah, that's true yeah on assignment uh -huh. in the Caribbean <laughs> so it's just a modest increase that's incorporated into uh -huh. to the slip slip fees and permit fee mm -hmm. calculations good Okay, and then we start with the, ex we can go over the expenses, also $10,000 increase, um, salaries and wages increased um, by 14,000 from 218 to 232,000. The majority of that was in regular salaries. Um, other charges increased by 15,000, which was 11% from 141 to 156,000. And then if you look on page 43, 43, it has all of the different accounts that add up to the other charges. Um, and there were some increases in debt service, and most of the other accounts remain the same. Who's charging you that much for water and sewer? We, we, we pay it gladly. <laughs> <laughs> Contracted services increased by 17,000. It was 22% um, from 77,000 to 94. Most of that increase was in the temporary restrooms and the grass cutting. And I think those were increased just based on recent actuals, correct? Uh, new contracts. Or new contracts, yeah. okay. Uh, the benefits increased by 6,000 from 67,000 to 73,000. That was 8%, and that was throughout a variety of accounts there. Supplies and materials went down from 41,800 to 35,800. Um, and if you look on page 44, the decrease was in other charges. Capital outlay decreased um, mainly because there was a budget for vehicles and additional equipment in FY23 that totaled 34,000. That was not included in the FY24 budget request. That is all we had for public landings operating. Um, unless there's questions or James, if you want to go over anything else. No, we try. Yeah. We try to be conservative so that there's a surplus at the end. <laughs> okay, and then we.
we can go over the public landings capital projects. So on page 19 of the capital budget summary, there are four total projects for public landings. The total for FY24 is $510,000, and the total for FY25 is $100,000 for a total over the next six years of $610,000. Out of the five hundred ten, how much of that's grant and how much of that's? All of it except the one fifty. The, uh, the so, pair improvements? Right, and that the reason is the um, waterway improvement fund, mm -hmm. um, the piers are not voter right. services, yeah. so we're looking for... Uh, which which fishing pier improvements are we talking about? Um, the Mattapique right. pier boat, the railing is in poor condition on the weather side, uh -huh. the water side. Uh -huh. it's, it's amazing to walk down there and look at the hardware left and right mm -hmm. really it's, it's impressive we wow. met with the dnr engineer and got the plans so um and then roman code deck could use some decking and yes. so okay. uh, those are the and 150 is going to cover both of us we hope we okay that's not preliminary right. estimates <laughs> what about jackson creek shoreline um so there's some concern about maybe um some erosion going on there so what i've FY24 would be to evaluate that, mm -hmm. and I think I can get grants for all that. Mm -hmm. um, there's pretty good, if it's public owned property for living shoreline kind of work, or if that's what it is, I'm, I, I don't want to get ahead of that. So I'd rather have experts evaluate it, and then they can come up with a number of what it will take. And I'm fairly confident there's grant funders out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Little Creek Landing. Yeah, we have poor drainage in the parking lot. Um, so. Uh, we'd like to improve that situation. That's 100% grant, grant funded, and it did. And the next two did meet. Um, were part of the DNR budget and then the governor's budget. Okay. So, and it, which is about to be approved, I presume, any day now. And so, once it's approved, and then they make it official and make an announcement. Right. Uh, the Thompson Creek bulkhead. Where? 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 where I don't. Even, where's that at? It's. Uh, Cracker Barrel, south of that road, the Cracker Barrel. Okay. Oh, Thompson Creek Road. Where all the abandoned boats are. Oh, is that where they are? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, There's been a couple out there on mooring piles that have been yeah. uh, a little problematic for us, and I think Commissioner Corcorino has been engaged with uh, with these guys. Oh, so yeah. I'm down at the, at the Kent Narrows. What's the one that's around the bend there? Good hands. Good hands. Good that's hands. the Good one hands. I was Actually, thinking. Oh, yeah, that's one in the road, yeah. yeah. We had one pulled in January and some others have moved on their own court mm -hmm. I'm not sure where they went but they're not there <laughs> but it pretty much takes an act of God to, to move one of those doesn't it it's it's waters of the state yeah and we are wow not the state mm -hmm. and what about the uh, project up in uh, is it Crumpton Jack yeah. Yeah. how's that going where, and where's that in here uh, good news on that we um, have a little schedule for you uh, share with Todd um, Put out an RFP for engineering, got an engineer on board at the last meeting as a desk item, action item. Yep. Um, so that engineer will have about four months to come up with design, permitting, and bid documents. And then once the permits are in hand and a construction bid is put out. Perfect. So, what's this for? Uh, uh, Crumpton. Crumpton. Salt Crumpton. 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 Right, 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 right. Yep. 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 So we combine the projects to get some economies to scale, but we've made it very clear, and including the winning bidder of the engineering understands that Crumpton is the number one priority of right. the two. Great. Great. Any, any questions? One quick question. I didn't mean to catch you off guard. We have the Kenton Arrows dredging in Queenstown Creek. We submitted earmarks for those, and we may want to include those in the budget at some point in the out years. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know if we're going to get right. that. Kenton dredging is a, already an FY twenty six or seven. No, prior. Really? Five. This is twenty four. So we got a million for that in FY twenty three. I think it was 22 or 23. Yeah, we can we can check. Okay, so, so is that, that going to cover it? That's a good question. But I, I just didn't see any new money coming in the out years, so I think we, we want to include that so we can uh, lose track of those two. Okay, that's all. We, we can adjust that in the out years. Uh, I I pictured it as supplemental to that FY23, but I will will create whatever the correct accounting of that is. Sure. Yeah. 
Awesome. And the, the CBEC project may be helpful on that. So we, mm -hmm. it may be okay. It's hard to tell when these contractors' prices mm -hmm. are going to be. Oh, boy. So. That's the truth. Yeah, we know. Yeah, for sure. I, and we probably can get some funding if, yeah. if needed. Well, I, James, I got to say, ever since I've come here, you, you've done an outstanding job. I mean, all of our, you know, the marinas, every, everything you got control of, you're on it, and, and and it's we never have any headaches here. So well, thank you very much for your hard work. Well, I appreciate the compliment. It doesn't always feel that way. Oh well, it, <laughs> there's it, some projects it, that we we really need to get going on there. Yeah. That finally making some traction so good yeah that's that's all right you know, well, moving again, forward. Yeah. again it you know your your department's one of those <clears throat> where the public is using you know and so again it gets back to that point where i was trying to make about you know during the summer months where we have a lot of our citizens in outside county rep people using our landings and so um it's tough to be under that microscope all the time in the summertime thankfully and then the local business owners complaining. It mostly, you know, we, we're, nice thing that we've done recently is a boater safety project that I'm pretty enthusiastic about and then um, turning a sad situation into a positive. And we've been working with- um, The tide charts? Yeah, the tide yeah. chart group. And they are um, maybe premature, but I think it's, <clears throat> it might go national. Really? And we, we were the first ones to partner awesome. with them. Very good. So, there you go. Yeah, that's been a rewarding project. Good. And, and, you know, for a lot of good reasons. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thanks, James. I think that concludes everything for parks, recreation, golf course, airport, and public landings. Mike, and you didn't even get to speak, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take two, take three, just, just two. All right. I guess we're gonna take take a three minute recess here. Okay. All right. We're moving right along. Works. We have the Department of Public Works up next. So Cole's gonna run through the operations, then we'll go through capital. Karen's gonna cover that. I'll go through. These gentlemen and ladies will answer any questions you have. Very well. We'll pretend to. <laughs> um, we'll start on page 80 in the binder, um, which is Department of Public Works total general fund revenue um, increase or decrease by 5% from 830000 to 790000 And we'll go through each of these um, departments separately. This is just a summary. Uh, and just a note before we get started again, Rhodes is not included on here because it's no longer part of the general fund. And then we, when we move to page 81, it's the same sort of summary. This is for the general fund expenses. Uh, it's 11% increase from 7,994 to 8,858. Um, and as we go through each of these, we will go over the enhancements that were included for each department. And then we start with DPW admin on page 82. Um, there's no revenue for DPW admin. Um, ex only expenses, that's what's on page 82. There were no enhancements requested, um, and it was an increase, just a $5,000 increase from 601,000 to 606,000. Um, the increase was all on salaries and wages, which increased um, by 5% to 379,000, all in regular salaries on just a small amount in the health insurance waiver. Benefits actually decreased from 129,000 to 116,000. It was almost 10%, and all of that was in the health insurance expense. There was no change in other charges. It remained the same at 98,000, and just a very small change in supplies and materials up to 12,000. How many people are in admin? Three. Three, okay. If we move on to page um, 83 through 85, we have animal services. On page 83, we have the animal services revenue, which remain the same at 40,000. Okay, animal services. We have animal control. Animal control. Yeah, two animal. totally different entities. 
It used to be all combined years ago, but we separated it um, in 2012 or so, thereabouts. So animal control is now part of emergency services under Correct. Lori Morris. Correct. Animal services is our um, our animal services building down in Queenstown. Well, we use, oh, that's so that's all that's there? Yeah, that's... Okay, yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah, the control division just does, you know, they, they respond to complaints and... Things of that nature. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. But uh, animal right. services, that's our adoption center, and, and Kelly runs that now. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when um, when the animal control board issues a fine, where's that? Where's those dollars on the fine? Go when, to when it's eventually to. paid, where's that go? It is coming through animal services. Okay. Right here. And that, yeah, I was going to say that that is cited on there. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. That's all right. So that revenue is on page 83. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Okay. Thank you. And then on pages 84 and 85, we have animal services expenses. The total amount increased um, by 18% from 1.2 million to 1.4 million. Um, it was 217,000 total. There was one enhancement which was funded, and that was for a medical care technician. Um, and those figures are included in the budget that's presented here. Salaries and wages increased from 625,000 to 619, um, which was 93,000, it was 15%. Uh, the majority of that was in regular salaries, 52,000. And then there were also increases in part-time overtime and holiday overtime pay. And that was all based on the actuals that we're seeing in 22 and 23. Supplies and materials increased um, by 73,000 from 180,000 to 253. And all of these increases were related to overall cost increases. Um, most of the categories increased. Um, medical supplies increased by 5,000. Animal supplies increased um, by 36. There was not a budgeted item for custodial supplies, so that was added in this year at 25,000. Um, and also office supplies. There's has not been a budget for that account previously, so $7,000 was added there as well. The benefits increased um, by 18,000, which was 10% from 187 to 205,000, and there were increases throughout all of the accounts there. So, um, I'm sorry, going back to to the medical supplies and animal supplies. Mm -hmm. So so the animal supplies, is that just because they've had a, a, literally a 50% increase? Right, yeah, I mean, it, it's us, not only just like food and things along those lines, animal supplies also are, you know, if we need new new kennels for, you know, guinea pigs, things like that. I mean, animal supplies is across the board okay. um, in terms of even toys or enrichment items. Okay. Um, but yeah, that that's where that expense is, is increasing quite a bit, though, is really just strictly through our vendors. And we don't get we don't get people that want to donate that we stuff? We do. We, we certainly do. Um, but our animals, um, we do try to feed them, obviously, a consistent diet. And right. so that is coming um, through Hill Science Diet. And okay. So they, they have seen a sharp increase this year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're still in a catch-up mode, too, from transferring out of animal welfare leg or whatever. So we're, right. it's probably our, our first full budget that we had an idea of what stuff really costs. Gotcha. How many are part-time folks, are there? So I do. Salary. Oh, for salary, yes. Yeah. So we, we have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have our full-time um, adoptions manager. We have a... Um, Animal care, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have 13, including myself, would be 14 uh, full time. Part time, I have um, two. We have a contractual behaviorist on staff, though, too, that is separate. Um, we have a contractual veterinarian on staff, also, that is separate. How many volunteers do you think? We have over 80 active volunteers right now. Do you have a volunteer manager? We do. We have a volunteer and outreach coordinator. She is full time. Did you say there was an enhancement? There is. There is an enhancement for a medical care technician. Correct. Is that what a facility oh, tech? No. No? What is it? Excuse me? I didn't see it on the. No, okay, see. so it's not, it wasn't on the summary, but it is on 
Let me see where that is. Put that page off. Man. Back to the front. It's on page seven in the front of the binder under the introduction section, mm -hmm. and it's the second item that's listed, it's animal services. That was fully funded. Did you say that was in here or not? Yes, yes. So that's already included in the expenses that we just went over. Ready? Do you want to go over that position? It, it really is um, going to be an enhancement. We are doing so much more medical care instead of outsourcing that we're actually performing all of these things here at Animal Services now. So um, just for instance, last year we did 559 surgeries. We're on pace this year to do 744. And these are, these aren't, I mean, these, these are Spare procedures neuter. that we're doing to for to our animals that we are adopting out okay yeah we are so is there a fee that so that fee is being transferred to the owners of the dogs that are being adopted out we or? try to out and in, insource it in terms of that that's the adoption um fee basically it should cover the medical costs of okay, yeah so that that's my question doing. so yes. if we've got you know eight hundred dollars invested in a dog we're not gonna get that back well maybe, not, that, not maybe that's that. not an accurate not number around so what are we looking at on an average adoption fee? Um, it, it varies, obviously. So um, a dog is going to be 140, a cat $60. Anything over the age of seven that's a senior is actually free because they are just hard, harder to move. Sure. Okay. <laughs> we must have given you some sort of hard deal then. <laughs> um. Now I know why we looked at it. Mm. Back in 2011, oh, yeah. you remember for the what it was? Budget we, we, to we, we were given two, outsource three, that. Five hundred thousand, and mm -hmm. here we are. Yeah, of operation. Yes, it is. Being able to do all these procedures, though, medical-wise, instead of outsourcing, is saving a lot of yeah. money. That well, you know, and I, I, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but you know, the public watches what you do very closely. Oh, yeah. Very closely in Queens County. And it's been smooth sailing. Yeah. So I, I will say though that at the time that a couple times that I've been to the facility, it's amazing. It's absolutely clean. Thank you. and clean and organized and everybody does a good job. Yeah. They really do. And again, that's also the volunteers too. They they come in and help out yeah. very much. So. So is there any capital improvements with? There are. Yes. Um, what page is that on? Page 16 of the capital budget summary. Were you finished with operating? Uh, we just oh. had one more category. Um, other charges on the bottom of page 84 was an increase of 33,000. And again, that was just multiple accounts just for increases that um, were made based on the actuals over the last two years. Um, that, was our, that was everything. Okay. So there are two projects on page 16 of the capital budget summary. Um, the total for FY24 is 290,000, and then the total over the next six years is 7.9 million. Mm. Primarily, um, 7 million of that is for the animal services building. So I don't know if you want to give a brief overview of that. Yeah, um, the the building that we are currently in, um, quite honestly, it's not designed. To, to hold the amount of animals that we have and the functionality of it just doesn't work. You're nodding your head. Yeah, it just doesn't work. The first hand. Um, it's a difficult flow. I mean, even just for, you know, sanitary purposes. Um, so we are looking to, um, we, we really can't revamp what we have. We, we need to build, we need to build a new building. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Somewhere. Somewhere, correct. Um, and, and hopefully we, we're working on, you know, trying to, can an addition put on in the cornfield? Which we we're talking to that landowner as a possible site. Mr. Dudley? Yes. As a possible site for the new building. Well, that's what we're looking at, right? Okay. But land is land. Well, you know, the fire department's going to back up to there. So he is willing to talk. We've got, we're talking. We're trying to talk to him. So the. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No. Like I said, it's totally different, so. How many acres would you need? Let's say he was willing to talk. We were gonna be asking for somewhere around seven. The reason is, is because we wanna be able to have a buffer in a sense, um, dog trails, things like that for the volunteers who do come and walk these animals, have them 
be able to walk in a safe place that's not necessarily butting right up to a main road. If we offered two or three, would that be acceptable? It's half of what they need. Yeah, we'd, we'd look at it. I mean, uh, it depends on what we do with the existing facility. But uh, her biggest fear is that if they do develop that property, they'll lose that paper right away, right along Route 50 as a service road, and they have nowhere to go. Or 301. It depends if they get sewer and water. So how does the, like you said, the new firehouse, what's that do to the, all those animals? That are in there when the sirens and then all that noise. You'll hear them how. Uh, yeah. I mean, quite honestly, they'll I mean, be in tune. They, back down, they, they will be in tune. <laughs> um, well, they, now, right? I mean, they can hear it. I, I, I hear it. A quarter mile. Yeah, and yeah, I, I don't think that it's going to affect it that okay. much. Versus if something else is being developed next door, we, we wouldn't know what that would be. Right. And then the construction of that would actually probably give more anxiety than anything else. Mm. So. What is the uh, capital equipment? At, at 290,000. 290, right. That was the FY24 request. It's on page 141. Is that new, I, did she, I think, did she say new cages? No, that would. So, there, if, yeah, so for equipment, we were looking at 60,000 for um, upgrading some more cat condos. Um, and then we were looking at. Equipment also um, for, for new cameras in the facility, as well as um, door access keys. We do not have any of that. Uh, and our camera placement is, is quite honestly, it's, it's, it's not good. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very difficult to see around the building. And when you do have staff working with animals, that is a safety concern um, for sure. And, um, and then we were asking for another uh, storage shed. And this, when I say storage shed, this is gonna be a larger structure for our behaviors to be able to um, do training classes. What we really do wanna to start to offer is that with every adoption, you get to meet with our behaviorists firsthand and have them one-on-one. -on -one. And you know, in the hopes that these animals wouldn't be returned. Well, and that's where I was just gonna ask, probably people get home and they go, I think I've made a mistake. They're overwhelmed. And how many, so if, let's say we adopt 30 out in a month, how many actually come back? Believe it or not, we, we, we've changed some of the things of how we're doing this now. So we used to do a lot of, um, yeah, you would just adopt out the same day. We're doing more foster to adopts now. Oh, so okay. everybody's able to kind of go home and get a feel for how it's going to work for them. Um, and that's actually been very successful. It seems like it takes the pressure off of the adopters. Very good. And you want to talk about the um, the yard area as well? So the yard, um, the 150000 that we did put on here was really just our best guesstimate. Um, at the time, speaking with um, a contractor who was going to come out to put in artificial turf for all three yards, replace the fencing, um, and just do some better drainage overall um, for these yards. Um, I will say that that figure on this paper is is now inaccurate as we did get a more solid estimate and that figure is is quite low um, to what we were looking to do what we have now in our yards is um, gravel and we have um, we have fencing that's quite honestly it's being held together by zip ties and again, this is this is obviously a big safety concern. We have animals that have actually gotten their heads stuck in these fences trying to get at one another. So something has got to be done with, with these yards and with these fences. Would you consider that a priority? A hundred percent. Okay. More than the surround sound for the dog and cat areas? Well. <laughs> what do they listen to? I'm curious. I'll, I'll be honest. There's What's... actually, believe it or not, so there's actually a channel, and it's called Through Dog's Ears, and it's called Through Cat's Ears. And we actually do play it right now. We do play it with um, smaller speakers like you would have in your house that you can connect your phone to. Um, believe it or not, there were studies. You're laughing. There's I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, studies began in this um, actually back in 2008 at some universities um, to see if it lowered anxiety levels, lowered the heart rate uh, of animals in shelters and in stressful situations. And this study has actually proven that classical music. So that's, that's what I wanted to know. What kind of what was despite it my out? trying to convince them they do not want rock. I, I you know they just don't listen to that. But classical music is actually very soothing to them. Um, and these, these studies. <coughs> do show that it is helping with anxiety. Hmm. Well, 
and believe it or not, all, the, all of the newer shelters and everything, um, if you're building <coughs> from the ground up again, surround sound is just a part of it now. Well, how big hey, is Lee, how I'm big is some it? classical music at home in my house? Just you're to gonna come and my, share it with my us. anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have classical music played while we're doing these budget hearings to reduce the anxiety? Sure. Yeah. Through commissioner's ears instead of through dog's so, ears. Yeah. <laughs> so how big is a $60,000 cat condo? So that's actually for 10. For what? That would be for 10. Um, so yeah, yeah. so cats? it actually would hold 20 cats. Just like we built. Oh, oh, We, we okay. actually just, okay. um, I just actually had this approved. I want to say I was here with you guys in October. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. actually the same, yeah. same model, same right. builds. Um, it's really just to replace some of the ones that are just yeah. outdated, warped, and, you know, not as functional. Okay. Okay. I'll say Kent County just built a brand new um, animal services mm -hmm. uh, facility, I think, a lot of these folks went up on a tour if you ever want to go look at a brand new place and we would also look at potentially combining animal control again we'd re you know evaluate that with animal services potentially as a as a future initiative put, put them under <laughs> and DPW. alan would be glad to give it to DES. that would be part of the part of the animal group yeah. we'll program. tell you what we'll let you pick who you want to work with sure. yeah. we have we have a great relationship with them though we, we do work very closely with them mm. either way so <clears throat> All right. All right. Any other questions for uh, Kelly? We love our animals. Services? Yes, we do. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have yeah. a good evening. Mm -hmm. Moving on, um, on page A6, we have engineering revenue. And there was no change. Uh, the engineering revenue budget remained the same at $40,000. Pages 87 and 88, we have engineering expense. Um, the total expense increased by 11,000, or 11%, which was 124,000, from 1,085 to 1.2 million. Um, there was one enhancement for a civil engineer, one, and that was funded for half of the year, and that is included um, in these figures. Salaries and wages increased uh, from 740000 to 796000 which was 8%, a $56,000 increase, and the majority of that was in regular salaries. Benefits increased by 62,000 from 244 to 306, and all of that was in health insurance, pension, and a small portion um, in the other accounts. Contracted services was a $5,000 increase, which was 8%, and that was throughout um, the several accounts listed there for contracted services. Supplies and materials, just a very minimal increase, um, and that was only 1% there. Other charges increased by 2%. Um, again, just a minimal increase for other charges. And on page 88, the total, again, is 1.2 million for engineering. And we have the enhancement if we want to go over that, and also um, capital projects to go over as well. Enhancements first. OK, so we have the civil engineer. Do you want to explain? Yep, yes, that's sir. right. So um, the engineering division is primarily tasked with the two elements. One, we do development review for roads, stormwater management, floodplain, and, and coordinate on the sanitary and uh, delivering those comments to plan zoning. The other half, and it's really more than half of what we do, is we maintain all the county facilities in the county's capital improvement program for those facilities. So that's what most of our staff engineers are doing. Right now at this moment, I'm knock on wood, I'm pleased to say that we're feeling pretty good and that have several new employees and there's that learning curve and it takes some time, but generally we find at this particular moment, we have we're in the fortunate position of having a little bit more funding and needs than we do the staff to get it done. And over the last few years, we've lost staff to a variety of things, either changes in life or other job opportunities. And, and, and HR and, and Todd, everybody's been very good with coming up with ideas and ways to attract and retain new talent. The reason why I'm requesting this position, we're 
have just enough staff to really kind of get the projects done now and my fear is always when's the next person going to leave and I have a real hard time you know doing that Facing training that and we do it but the big fear is the t amount of time it takes to find someone good and then to bring them in and to have them learn not only the institutional knowledge but also if we get someone new out of college which is really the type of thing we're looking for it takes time you know years to get up to speed so the primary purpose of this request is having a position that not necessarily that i would fill it tomorrow but it's just if a few we months somebody, we want to be able to hire them yep that's right and the other thing we want to do is build a bench because um well for me personally i'm i'm doing my exit strategy right now so there's going to be sure we've got to build up some people get them experience right. so to backfill mm -hmm. and we've talked about that yes for years. it's a succession planning yep. initiative and as Lee mentioned and Alan too, I mean, finding uh, qualified candidates for or engineering any or any candidates has been probably this has been the most difficult <coughs> position for us to, to fill. It really has been. It's I mean, been we very, remember very we said the deputy directors and that was that role. Is, yeah. is that funded there. in your budget? Hmm? Was that half. request? Half. Yeah, yeah. Well, I put I put it in for fifty percent of the year, okay. but I right. mean, if we find somebody, we well, that's what you're saying. So you are looking for somebody. If somebody comes along, you snatch them if they don't come along you're still looking and, and i still have an engineering uh, vacancy of sanitary that needs to be filled uh -huh. which i might poach from him uh-huh so i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay rob peter to pay paul yeah all right yeah. capital so on page 15 of the capital budget summary, the total FY24 request for admin and general services was $4.6 The total over the next um, six years is $22.4 million. Um, and the two largest projects are the historic courthouse at $9 million and the Cloverfields flood mitigation at $3.4 million. So out of this four point six, is any of this grant? Or is this all? It is. Um, there was 450000 for the Sudlersville Senior Center that's okay. under grants, yep. and then half of the Bloomfield Manor House is grant funded, so 17500 mm -hmm. So this year is a million dollars to the courthouse to do what? This year would be focusing on replacement of the roof, and uh, doing some interior renovation work with the um, electrical and things that we can get done while we are working on completing the uh, engineering drawings for the renovation plan. And so in three years, we're going to spend $9 million on that courthouse. The, the, what, what other plans are there and what, what is that involving? Five and a half million dollars in, in the next cycle. What, what are we doing, interior? Or? Oh, entire, well, second floor we're keeping relatively as it is, uh -huh. but we have to add an elevator, right. which is a big ticket item. Right. Um, we're gonna remove the register of wills into the first floor, so that all has to be revamped to some large degree. And then the basement is gonna be largely flex space, office space, but all the mechanical equipment in there is from 1966. So it's, it's a huge undertaking what we gotta do. So majority, okay, well. Mm. That also serves to free up space, additional space up here in the Liberty Building right. if we move the Register of Wills uh, Orphan's Court functions over to the historic courthouse. We also have the 911 Backup Center in the, in the lower level yeah. the courthouse basement. in the basement. And then we're also going to have a big, large um, conference room down there that we hope we use, utilize for the FEC meetings so that they meet monthly and they give them an office space down there in a big meeting hall in that lower level of the courthouse. Oh, the old Are we trying courthouse. to empty this building? Well, we've, I mean, we have a, it's, we're full. I mean, this building has got a, we, you know, we're, we're jammed in here. There's no really room to any, for any expansion for staff, you know, on the first floor. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Comments? Questions? Do we have no? more? Is a big year. Yes, it is. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blue bond market. Okay. Well, I mean, that's part of this process, too. Some Absolutely. Things, some of yeah. those things can be pushed out. Some no, no, no. Yeah, I get it. I mean, we talked about this last time. You know, it's much easier 
on budgeting when the, the numbers stay relatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's yeah. a challenge, and we, yeah. we will we will continue to work on that to uh, sort of you know hopefully you know. Well, it's uh, good. I'm generalize that, but we we also want to have a good, solid, realistic plan of what we need to plan for over the six-year period. And I got to say that. We'll get into this with, at the next uh, budget workshop with our Board of Education folks, but they've got really not a lot of anything in the out years, and we know there's going to be expenses there, so we've got to build some some uh, some budgetary authority out there, at least plan for it in the capital plan, because we know there's always going to be some work that's needed to be done at the schools. Um, maybe some of you recall there was, a in 2016, a pretty comprehensive assessment done of all their facilities, and I'm not even sure that... You know, uh, the new superintendent may not be fully aware of that, but it's it's got some some. It, it probably needs to be revised and updated, but it's it's got some pretty big numbers in it. You know, for the out years. So we'll be looking at that a little more comprehensively as as this process goes forward. And the structure prices are just going through. Right now. Mm -hmm. I was always pushing that there's going to, we'd be in a recession by now, but. We ain't over near a recession mm -hmm. construction wise. It's just on fire. Very good. All right. Okay. No other questions. So does that mean that our numbers because are inflated? Meaning not our numbers, but just because of inflation, the numbers across the board are inflated twenty percent to thirty percent. Yeah, I mean, we always shoot high. We don't want to ask for more money, but routinely we have to ask for more money. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a recent trend over the past couple of years. A lot of the Board of Education projects are coming in way higher than the original budget, and we've seen that with some of our larger capital projects as well, primarily, you know, materials and, of course, labor. I mean, labor, labor costs uh, are, are high, right, higher. I mean, the Consumer Price Index is going up 9% uh, this past year. So... You're, we're seeing that. We're feeling that. But it never comes back down. Labor, probably not. Yeah. Materials may stabilize, yeah. but it's right. it's. I think it's here for the for the foreseeable future, for certain. So, center row middle is a double ten. FY twenty six twenty seven ten million. I think center row middle is under the board of education, right? Yeah, it's under board of education. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can cover that uh, a little budget. more when we get to Board of Education next work session. That's that's uh, yep. That's sweet. Their request. That middle school we toured that last year. Some of the yeah. commissioners toured that last year, and that's their next school they want to put on the, if you want to say the docket for reconstruction, uh, or um, a new school. And um, you know we're still looking at those options. We have the old uh, the old high school down here. We have to figure out something to do with as well. That clinking noise. Clink, 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 clink. Think, that's right. As it does where it gets closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. On to general services. General, general services. services. Okay. Um, starts on page 89. And we start with general services revenue. There was no change from last year. The budget remained the same at 35000 General services expenses is on pages 90 and 91. Um, the total budget changed by 15%, increased 444,000 from 2.9 million to 3,370,000. There was one enhancement. It was a facilities technician, um, and that was fully funded in the county administrator's budget, and those figures are included. So we started at the top of page 90 with other charges. It was a 14% increase from 930,000 to 1,061,000. Um, and that was 131,000 total. 100,000 of that increase was in electricity based on the increase in utility supply cost. Really? Wow. Because those panels aren't helping out that much, are they? <laughs> no. <clears throat> wow. Well, the good news is the supply, the supply has gone up to the point where we weren't in the red anymore. So mm -hmm. we, we were on supply. Now, distribution saved us because for whatever reason, we don't pay distribution on those panels. But hmm. for a while, we were in the red supply-wise with the, with the big array. But now we're back in the black. But it, they have saved us well over a million dollars. Wow. Good. 
Uh, we also see that propane gas increased and heat increased by 20,000. Um, that increase was just based on actuals, which are showing a 20% increase from FY23. And then we go down to salaries and wages. It was a 10% increase, which was 79,000 from 783 to 862,000. And that was split between a variety of accounts. Regular salaries increased by 38,000. And then we also had increases in overtime and part-time and standby pay um, based on actuals over the last two years. Contracted services was an um, increase of 150,000 from 679 to 829. Um, there was a variety of accounts that increased here. Repairs increased by 15,000. Uh, grass cutting had an increase of 75,000. Um, that was based on actuals. If you look at FY22, you'll see it was more than double what was the original budget for 23. We took um, over housing grass cutting. Uh huh. Hmm. Um, there was an increase in consultant expense, again, to align with the 22 actuals um, and also the expected for 23. Snow removal was not included in last year's budget, um, and although that cost uh, varies, we did go ahead and put in 25000 for the FY24 budget um, as an estimate. That pest control, is that the mosquito program or mm. no? That's just, just, buildings and just buildings and stuff around here? And moving on to page 91, we have benefits at the top, which increased by 52000 from... <laughs> 377 to 428,000 and that was um, three the majority of that was in the health insurance account we had supplies and materials increased by 35,000 to one from 153 to 188 um, and the majority of that was in materials and it was based on actuals uh, the 30,000 that was budgeted was closer to the FY 22 actual of 28,000 there was no capital outlay requested, and the total budget was $3.3 million. Do you want to go over the enhancement first? That was the hmm. facilities technician one. What page? Yep. Yep. That's, uh, that's the one that's on your, yeah. the one she gets. Oh, the one, the, yeah. head, the desk item? Yep. Yeah, it's on the desk, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in your binder, too. This is just a summary sheet of that, of that particular page. Right. So what page in the binder? Seven. I don't know. This Which one is it? I think it's eight. Page eight. Okay. Got it. Yeah. 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 Yep. Facilities technician one. Yep. So what does a facilities technician one do? Um, repairs. Excuse me. Repairs in the uh, buildings. Oh, okay. All right. A little bit HVAC. Electrical, plumbing, You're working under carpentry, painting. All the above. Right. What yes. do they can do about us having to hire an outside contractor? Okay. Someone's always too hot or too cold, <laughs> especially at this time of year. So uh, facilities techs take care of those problems That's right. for us. Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. some painting in here to do as oh, well. Believe me. Yeah. Yeah. We're waiting for to do the roof first. Yeah. Yeah. Got to got to secure the source first, right? Yeah. Well, that's funded. Okay. Then call us. There is on page 103 um, the actual request, and it's also on the screen for that position. Okay. Capital was already included in the add-on. Okay, so services. we already went over the capital. Yep. Yep. The facilities tech is largely a similar story to the engineer. It does tend to be one of our more difficult positions to fill. Uh, We'd, uh, we'd had a vacancy for, for many years, a hard time getting. So many of them are just attracted to the higher paying, you know, private sector positions. And the, of the uh, three that we have, I'm sure you probably met them, Jeremy and Dave and Andy, they, they aren't getting any younger. So we, we'd like, we to, like to send them in pairs too, so three doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very well. There are uh, about 40 facilities which comprise about 50 different buildings. That doesn't include board of ed, uh, just count, county buildings. There's a, I believe it's about 49 buildings and 
I think what we'll call about maybe 39 facilities. So for example, Public Works is a facility with multiple buildings. Correct. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Range in age from 230 some years old to not a technician. two years old. Excuse me? Not a technician. Not the technician, <laughs> the facilities. The facilities, yeah. <laughs> Can we get a couple more years out of him? <laughs> He's a little bit crusty in the corner. All right. The schoolhouse across. Boo. <laughs> What's that? The school, the one, with the one room schoolhouse on. That's my house. Right? Yeah, not, not ours. I'm not sure who, who's, Which who one? does own that. The, there's, a, there's a one room schoolhouse Hope, in, front Hope, of, uh, Hope. in front of the high school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a historic site. It's on Board of Ed property. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a historic site. Yeah. Don't worry, it'll be our problem one day. Hey, don't. I just say that. Remember Chesapeake College, what sits on the outside road? Those little Chinese or things rotting apart. And oh, yeah. We took care of that. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. It's cold. Okay. All right. All right, moving on. Okay. Um, property management. Age 92 and 93 is property management. Um, this does include property management division, also weed control and mosquito control. Um, the revenue on page 92 was an increase of 15,000 15, um, from 170 to 185. Um, and that increase was throughout several accounts here. Um, so it was a 9% increase. Then on page 93, we have the expenses for property management, um, which actually decreased from 375,000 to 360,000. There was no enhancements requested. Um, several of the categories did increase, um, which was then offset by a decrease in capital outlay. Salaries and wages increased by 7,000 in regular salaries. Supplies and materials increased by 9,000 um, throughout several of the accounts. Benefits increased slightly by 3,300. It was a 6% increase. Um, capital outlay decreased by 40,000. Uh, there was equipment that was budgeted last year that was not uh, requested this year. Um, other charges, it was a, just a slight decrease of $500 there in the communications expense. And then there was an increase of $5,000 in contracted services, which was all for land appraisals. So in total, it was a 4% decrease for property management. Um, so no enhancements and no capital, right? There is actually oh. two projects okay. under um, capital. Um, the total for FY24 is 475000 and the total over the next six years is $2 million. Um, the 175 okay. sorry, uh, 15 of the capital budget. Very okay, bottom of 15. So the 175 in FY24 is for a public health and safety facility feasibility feasibility study and then the public safety property acquisition is 300,000 over the next six years so in layman's terms uh, what are those both those projects what what exactly does that entail the uh, health and safety is to look at the sheriff's facility and the health department to, to figure out what's best to do with them either move one to a new building and tear down okay. an old building or okay that Try mm -hmm. to give us a blueprint on how to move forward with those two okay. facilities. Yeah, the sheriff's facility is probably the um, you know it's it's in it's it was never designed as a no as an office. Right. It was a warehouse. Right. It's in pretty poor condition. Uh, between that one and the uh, animal services shelter, those are probably the two worst facilities we have in the inventory. I would say. I mean, I'm not so speaking that, for these guys, but this is an evaluation to figure out you know look at options for. Will they take into consideration the, the property that, I mean, I imagine this will have to go out for bid and then you, it won't, won't be let for another three or four months at the earliest. Hopefully by then we'll have that land and that'll play into this study. It certainly could. could. Yeah. It'd be a component for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just saying if we do yeah. the study now and we get the land, then it kind of. No, nah, this won't happen until July. So okay. we should know something. Yeah. Okay. All right. and the land you're talking about is Iron Flat, right? Excuse me? Yeah. What the, land? Up on the, e the eastern pre-release, pre-release, pre -release, pre -release, pre -release, flat, yeah. flat iron, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's that's roughly 80 acres up there, right? So, so you're thinking maybe the sheriff's department could go up there? Yes, yeah. yes, it's potential possibility, yeah. mm -hmm. possibility. Mm -hmm. 
In the property acquisition, what is that one? I added that one in. Okay, so good. we there are several um, uh, ongoing discussions about uh, um, relocating some of our emergency services crews at uh, new firehouses. So we uh, we put some money in here Station for, two. for potentially acquisition or uh, siphons back to those companies for um, allowing our units to one time fees or these or it could think? we don't really have any okay. concrete um, um, proposals yet but it could be a one-time fee it could be an annual fee or we could acquire property over a number of years and and use that facility as a as another county facility so it's kind of a placeholder we're not sure what we're going to do exactly at this point in time but there are as you know uh two uh, station two and two station three, three are uh, moving f through the process to build new facilities right. currently, and right. I think I think one's we coming through. Two hundred out of st so. Station Crazy building new house. Plus the one at Kent Airlines. Yeah, Station. Just, that's two hundred. That's right? two hundred. Two hundred. It's yeah. It's 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 in the floodplain. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that would give us uh, some some funding there to. And and they were very Crazy was very receptive of, in the process of building the new firehouse, accommodate paramedic two hundred. So is Queenstown. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. On to roads. Okay. Um, road starts on page 94 uh, with roads revenue. Now a completely separate fund. Um, that's why we're showing the uh, increase from the 23 budget of 1.3 million to 6.2 million because it's a separate fund. It has to be. Um, balanced and fully budgeted. Um, so you see the transfers in, which is from the general fund, that's 4.6 million. And then this state shared taxes, uh, which is the highway user tax of 1.5 million. Was that programmed? Was that a surprise? The uh, HUR, yeah, that was programmed. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. yep. It's going to go up the next maybe two more years, and then it's going to, yeah, we'll be back at it again. I get the General Assembly asking continue that. Of course, by then we'll have electric cars everywhere anyway. Yeah, so it won't matter, right? Yeah. <laughs> and cat condos. <laughs> wow. Um, page 95 and 96, we have roads expenses, um, which increased from 5953000 up to 6213000 which was a 4% increase, 259000 there was one enhancement for roads. It was a roads operator one position, and that's fully funded and included in these figures. Um, and this roads, the expenses include all divisions, admin, shop, maintenance, and other public roads. So at the top of page 95, we have salary and wages. It was 3% increase from 2,977,000 to 3,069,000. Um, and the majority of that was in regular salaries. And we have benefits, which actually decreased um, by 2%, 26,000 from 1,531 to 1,505, all in the health insurance category. Supplies and materials, it was a 16% increase from 1,198 to 1,388,000. Um, and the majority of that was in shop and automotive supplies, which it was a $175,000 increase based on cost. If you see the FY22 column, it shows the cost at 524000 um, So the budget was increased in 24 to align closer to the actuals. There were some other increases, um, miscellaneous throughout the other categories um, for supplies and materials on pages 95. And then if we move over to page 96, other charges, there was no change. It remained the same at 116000 Capital outlay relate, uh, remain the same at 100,000. Uh, just a $2,500 increase for contracted services, which was in consultants. So we had the one enhancement for the roads operator, and then we also have some capital um, that we can go over. So. The enhancement is on the summary sheet that we handed out. Are there any questions on that, or do we want to go over any more information? Mark.
parking lot overlay. I guess that's uh, Queen Anne's High School for the 600000 Or is this what we're doing? Where are we at? Um, Cap we did. Capital. Yeah. That's on Capital. On page 19 is the Rhodes Capital. Um, it was $6.6 .6 mm -hmm. um, for FY24. And the parking lot overlays does include 555000 for phase two at the high school. Okay. Yep. yep. And I believe that is under contract. We want to get and that started. We moved that over to the roads division. And, so I, you know, and this, is, this is a perfect example of what we did years ago with the asphalt overlays. They're running between 2.4 and 2.6 a year. So, I mean, you know, we, we knew every year that coming in, that's what we were going to put in there. So, mm -hmm. 19. the Thompson Creek connector, huh? Thompson Creek Connector is um, fully grant funded, so that 1.8 million is grant funded. We plugged it in as a grant project for now because we did request that earmark. For right, but we don't know that we got that yet. We don't, right. but we okay. do want to plan for it here right. in, the, in the capital plan. But we think that whole shebang is going to be nine million bucks. That's what the estimate is currently. We're still looking at that, but it's yeah, it's, it's expensive. Uh, I got to get back into that section. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> The other grant funding project under Rhodes was um, one, two, three, Nichols Manor, which was two hundred thousand, but one hundred and sixty thousand of that is grant funded. And Little Kid Wells, the extension, it goes into uh, through the YMCA. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. that's more like it. Too. That's to be a full road. No, that's that's yeah. not. A, that's, a, that's additional money. That's additional money that we need. <laughs> we had, we you could let me enjoy that for a little bit. You <laughs> just jumped right on me, man. <laughs> Margie. Yeah. Everything, everything you're going to you're going to see a couple of projects uh, at the meeting uh, on the 11th. Uh, two of which, uh, well, two projects: um, the um, the Heritage Center parking lot and and this Kidwell Extension parking lot, where we need additional funds to complete them. Well, maybe not Kidwell. Maybe not Kidwell. Oh, good. I hadn't heard that. That's good. Bids came in today, right? How much do we have now currently? How much for Little Kidwell currently? Uh, I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. I can get back to you. Oh. What bridges do we maintain? Which ones? We, what, we, it says bridge maintenance, 600000 Yeah, we maintain, uh, it's like 30, it used to be thirty nine, but we gave, really? well, but we gave a lot. There was a lot of them on line bridges in Carolina, so we split them up. Okay. And we don't, we don't do number 10 anymore either. We give that to Kent County. I think it's like we, 25. Really? Mm. Up, almost all up county. Well, you got the two at Prospect Bay, but. They're not bridges, really. Well, they are, but they're in the inventory. Yeah. So the, we own those? Mm -hmm. do, we own the roads in Prospect Bay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, oh, I, I thought they were private. Yes, we do. But most of the bridges are up county. Wow. Okay. And yeah, about 20 years ago, we replaced all, yeah, of, them. all of them. But I did that before I went to sanitary. Right. And uh, so they're all coming back around for, and they get inspected every every couple of years, and there's little things you got to just, you know, guardrails and repairs. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. Well, I mean, they're not like structurally unsound, but right. a lot of guardrail work needs to be done and stuff like that. Okay. Solid waste it is. Solid waste. Solid waste. Oh, this is up, just your bit, daddy right here. Yep. Solid waste. Mm -hmm. Come on. Very funny. <laughs> Page uh, 97, uh, we can start with solid waste revenue. The budget actually decreased from 545,000 in revenue to 490. Um, and I think some of that was based on the actuals, what we were expecting. Largely, I guess, from the recycling market kind of take tail mm -hmm. off. Well, we're, not, we're selling books like we thought we would either. Ticket books are coming down to sales. I wonder where they're taking it. A lot of people are getting a you know prescription curbside pickup oh, service yeah. you know that they can you know guilty I went to it and that's pretty bad because I live right around the corner from it yeah get, on, you get man. curbside pickup really <laughs> no we still buy a book because there's inevitably stuff that she has to get rid of right I bought Notice a, she I has bought to a get book rid of when I moved here and I think I only used three tickets yeah because it all just goes to work with me no, they're still good yeah they don't oh believe me yeah. Yeah. Are you giving to me? No. no, no, no. <laughs> um, on pages 98 and 99, we have solid waste expenses, um, which was a 5% increase from 1,806 to 1,890. There were no enhancements for solid waste, and this does include their four divisions admin, recycling, site, and transfer. 
solid waste, uh, the salaries and wages increased by 5% from 652 to 683. That was 30,000. And that was throughout the categories, um, regular salaries, part-time, and overtime. There was a slight decrease in other charges. Um, it was less than 1%. Benefits, there was a 4% increase, which was 10,000 from 248,000 to 258, and all of that was in health insurance. Contracted services increased um, by 43,000 from 226 to 269, and all of that was in other cost, which was the increase in recycling cost. Let me ask you about it. Let me ask you one more question. Did they do what? I'm sorry. MES used to fund more uh -huh. of these events or these uh, costs than they uh -huh. do anymore. A lot, the vast majority of that's tub grinding brush, which they used to do, which now we have to do. When that tornado hit, we got a, what did we, I mean, I know we were grinding the daylight. We had a tub grinder up there. I remember, I remember the tornado. I don't yeah. remember. Uh, the tub grinder up there uh, for all the trees and everything that was coming in there. What did, who paid for all that? State, they, we uh, we actually got some grant money for some of that, but yeah. we paid for a lot of that too. Did I mean, we? We had, yeah, I mean, we had you know, we yeah. had some money in the budget. You have to do something, so, with it. To do oh, something. yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it was a lot of material for sure. Mm -hmm. There was some FEMA reimbursement for that, yeah, it was for those uh expenses. Um, at the bottom of 98, supplies and materials, there was no change, the budget remained the same at 211,000. And then at 99, it's just the summary. The increase again was from 1,806 to 1,890,000. Um, and no enhancements. There are some capital projects. Yes. Um, so the capital projects are mm -hmm. page 17 of the capital budget summary. The FY24 amount is 590,000, and the total over the next six years is 2.4 million. Um, the three projects are transfer station maintenance, and then there's two capital equipment projects, one for heavy and construction equipment, and another project for small and non-motorized. And these are the same um, capital project requests that we see in solid waste. Mm -hmm. um, every year. year. Every year. year. Yes. Containers, compactors, roll off. And as part of this process, Karen and I, we did go over any available balances and projects. Um, with the departments, I know with roads, we were able to decrease their request for some of their equipment based on what they had. And we also did the same for solid waste. Um, so those have already been reflected in the budget. I think that is everything except for sanitary. Um, so we can go over sanitary now. And that starts on page 106 in the binder with sanitary wastewater. And just to reiterate, I, I, I know we all know that, but sanitary is a completely a uh, enterprise fund. So the user rates pay for the services they provide to their customers in the sanitary district so this is really a, not a general funded account it only went up two percent so i think we're good are we going to go up to and a half percent revenue for rates uh that's right we, we took a pass last year didn't we yes. who did that well just saying your budget is a two percent increase in certain well i want to thank my fellow commissioners for that since i'm the only one that's actually on county services so maybe i should Recuse myself. Because <laughs> you know how I'm going to vote out. Don't call with a complaint. Nope. <laughs> wow. You're on the blacklist. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, we do have other sanitary funds if we want to go over them. Um, and they all have very minimal increases. We have sanitary water, um, we have the ski funds, Sudlersville. Mm. Um, Everything so, was oh, either remained constant or it was a minimal change. What about the uh, contracted services? We're about sorry. That went from 415 to 614. Um, what page are you on there? Okay, so that's under water, and that um, 
That's for the advanced metering. Right. That's so that was an increase ah, okay. um, of 107,000 mm -hmm. for the metering program. I think it was like 95. But we also the other big thing is the uh, water tower maintenance. So those two are the big ones. Well, what are you doing to the water tower? We pay somebody every year to maintain them, paint them, clean them. Every year? Mm -hmm. they we pay them every year. They don't paint them every year, but we oh. pay them every year. Oh, 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 okay. It's like an insurance policy. So when it's time to get painted, they get up there and. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Wow. It was also on page 112 underwater. There was an increase of 50,000 in electricity, and again, that was increasing energy cost. Capital outlay decreased for water based on um, the request. There was a request that was higher last year, so we brought that down based on this year's request. Well, I got to say that you know the Southern Kent Island sewer project is just running, just humming along. Exactly. I mean, we can remember the days of sitting in the auditorium <laughs> with laser shot at us and everything else. To one year into the, the you know the construction of this, that people calling going, when can I get mine? When can I get mine? So I think it's been a great project. I think that your team and uh, Coal Ventures done an outstanding job. I mean, anybody here get a call in the last year? I mean, it just nothing. So, it just, well, that the one going. call is when you're going to hook me up. Yeah. When you're going to hook me yeah. up. But well, there's been complaints about the growth. Well, yeah, I mean, the infill, correct. But uh, you know, I mean, that's was part of the deal with the state, and it's all moving forward. So, you know, and then Sublesville the same way. So, why don't you give us a little recap of how that's going? Uh, which aspect? Uh, well, this, their sewage treatment plant and, and the billing and Barclay. Barclay, how? Barclay's moving ahead. I mean, we've got the biz in, as you know. We've got 90 days, so we've got to get MDE is funding most of it, but USDA is funding a portion of it, and they're a much bigger. Pain in the butt. Per, yeah. Huh? So we've got to get both of them to approve our bids by May 25th. How did the bids come in as far as what you thought? Good. Good. Pretty much right on estimate. We were happy. Mm. And then there's a local contractor, and uh, we had a good, good uh, interest. I think we had six bids. Oh, nice. So, what's the dur duration of that project? How long? Is a year. It? A year. A little bit more. So, when that's done, how much capacity-wise at Southersville, from what they're flowing now to with Barclay, is it? I'm thinking fifteen thousand. Is what they're flowing now? What the fifteen? Oh, fifteen. They're more. flowing sixty-seven now. Okay. And Barclay probably had maybe fifteen to it. Good. That still gives them a hundred some thousand to grow if they How desire. Are they from uh, uh, the outskirts or the Nine. three three miles. Three, sure. Three, three, yeah, from the outskirts. That's three miles, yeah. yeah. Depends on where you want to start to measure. The, the, the denied access portion is about three miles, which is the town limits of Barkley to the town limits of Summers. And is that uh, Force Main or Vacuum? Force Main? Right. I'm looking forward to getting it over. That's, it, <laughs> that was more. That was harder than Southern Canal, believe me. Really, really. From an approval standpoint, just everything. Everything. <laughs> I spend more time on that than. That will be a anything. legacy of yours. Yeah, yeah, as we say, the easy part's the construction. You know? So that's you know, the planning and the engineering and you know, dealing with the various municipalities has been challenging, but we're almost there. I mean, municipalities weren't a problem, but all the other aspects were. Well, while we're on uh, that, Alan, what's, uh, what are you hearing about the uh, Millington to replace the Queen Anne? Um, not much. Um, I heard every once in a while you hear something. Um, oh, there's a lot of moving parts in that one. I don't know, I don't believe Sutterville has the capacity currently, and I really am hesitant to believe that MDE would allow them to expand because they're dumping into the red line branch, which is a ditch about from that ditch to there. So it's not, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how MDE would view that. But Millington doesn't have the ability to build a $60 million plan either. Well, nobody does. You know? I'm saying so. <clears throat> and that other plant where they're using right now is probably not the best sewer plant in the state of Maryland. You know, so. Yeah. 
this right on the banks of the river has issues. In it. But a little below sea level. I prefer it, it stay their problem personally. Right. All right. We also had some sanitary capital projects. Do you want to go over on sure. page 20? Yep, page 20 of the capital budget summary. The total sewer for FY24 was 5.8 million. The total over the next six years is 23 million. For total water, FY24 is 4.7 million. And the total over the next six years is 12.6 million. Has the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to no, say no. the majority of the sewer uh, projects are for the ski um, phases two, three, and four. I don't know if you guys want to touch on any projects in particular or well, the the um, the meter replacement has that started yet? They've done their inventory. Yeah, uh -huh. we've had we've had a thanks to Jimmy Carter when we went into the water meter business, we put all our meters in cubic meters, which confuses people right off the get go. Cubic <laughs> meter meter. But, so we we had this long tortured debate whether we should switch to gallons or not, and we decided not to because it's going to be difficult enough just to get it done without switching volumes. And a large part of it is Jeff, we have to rely on Jeff heavily to do that. And he's got a thousand better things to do. And we have to rely on Munis, who has got a terrible reputation for helping out too. So uh. we just said, uh, we just, now nah, we'll just. But what does everybody else know me do? Do they do gallons? Sure, around here, sure. Huh. Some, some bit cubic feet, but uh, you know, gallons obviously makes a lot of sense. And you get into a lot of arguments with people. Like, you know, I just, I was only here for two days that whole quarter, and I didn't use 200 gallons. Well, no, but you used a half a gallon, and it clicked. One cubic meter is 262 gallons. It was just, just the luck of the draw that you were right there, and you turned, flushed that toilet one time too many. And <laughs> so that, I, you know, I never knew that. Through so you to the next category. Of, right, that, you know, that kind of explains why some people, I can't believe I didn't use any water. This year I used water, or this month I used water, and I, and the I, didn't, I didn't get that click. <laughs> Especially if you live, live alone or two people and set in their ways, They'll, they'll get the same usage every quarter. Now you say, yeah, there's just no way. Well, it's not really the same usage every quarter. It's within 262 gallons every quarter. Of it, so. Wow. And the cost to bring it, regardless of the cost to bring it there, it stays consistent whether you use the water or not. And that's what I try to explain. Our rates are it's hard to believe. When we first went to the sanitary district, um, their rates were sky high. But all the jurisdictions, all the towns are higher than we are uh -huh. now. Wow. Mm. I see uh, we haven't, uh, do, have we put the Chester, my water it's main out street. here? It's on the street? It's on the street. When does it do? May 1st. Hmm. Christine, I don't see a tower on here. I figured that would have been. I thought we had a placeholder for a tower. Yeah, you do. It's on here. Yeah, yeah, it's on the next, the next two cycles. Tower. Yeah. 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 Very good. Mm. So, can I ask for an increase per day? I'm sorry, what? Can I the, uh, you ask for an increase? Was it the rates, you mean? Yeah. Two and a half percent? Two, yeah. Routinely, we, until last year, we've always gone up two and a half percent a year. Just to keep up with inflation, labor costs, uh, energy, something. Thank you. Are you playing the numbers? Yep. So you did include two and a half percent increase on the rates, you know, for FY24, and that'll be another decision the commissioners will have to make uh, to do that before we strike the budget for FY24 to, I'm sorry, to, to adjust the rates for water and sewer services in the sanitary district. If you do nothing, um, they go up by. Oh yeah, you got this. Yeah. Yeah, they go up by a higher percentage, like five percent. Mm -hmm. But you have to actually make a motion to increase the rates at a lower percentage. So because we didn't do anything, it compounds to the next. I mean, it, you just add. So we do two percent, two point five percent escalator every year is really what we did, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, so we took a pass study, this year. When we did the rate study in twenty ten, the commissioners then adopted a resolution that said that they would raise five and a half percent for water and six and a half percent for sewer unless you acted otherwise. Right. Right. We never did. We've never raised them that much. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions? Good job, Smooth. gang. Oh, well, we're not done yet. Oh, no. Outside agencies. Come on. It's done. I'm done. It's all, all done. Right.
Everybody turned them in. Now there were some things. I think some, we have to make some tweaks. There were some yeah. tweaks that need to be done. You just want to put those tweaks together, and then we'll do it next Thursday or whatever. No, 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 no. no. Come on, let's. I don't want to tweak them right now. I don't want to. You tweak don't have them anything now. to tweak. That's why you don't want to do it. I want to help you guys tweak. No, we don't need tweaking. I don't need Thank no help you. with your tweaking. If you send me the you do more twerking than tweaking. So. <laughs> I'll tell you what you do. Oh, oh. Just get it if you could put to, if you could put together <laughs> just those sheet. items that we can at least you had we can at least look about. at it. Real. How about we just look at everybody's selections real quick? Can we do that? Do we have everybody's in there? Everybody's. Patrick, I believe I thought is he had something left over. I think there is some on the table. Good, because I I want to help him with that. We're done. Thank you. <laughs> That's a way to help the new guy. So, Alan, mm -hmm. how much, what's the timeline for the exit? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. At least not less, be, not less than 1.5 years? No, Excuse me? I will not be serving another set of commissioners, I can tell you that. He, he'll be here till the end. What if it's the same? Why? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay, so you got to get somebody in here. Or you got the next couple of years to get someone up to speed, right? Yeah, from in house. Well, from in house. Yeah, yeah that, I think that's one of those things where you got to stay in house. You've got to know the systems inside and out. Yeah, except when we went for the county administrator. We just got to let you there. That's right. Well, look at it. We got Pat Thompson up here, and he, you know, <laughs> the keeper of the Holy Grail. He's that's got it right. all going on, you know. <laughs> Yeah. 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 All right. Listen, the most important thing is that they have your personality. You're done, Lee. All right. You get to go home. It was taken off. So the blue all the way to the right is the grand total. Right. And then we be over six hundred eighty nine. We only had 500,000. Oh. Who went over 100? Who no, went no, over? No, no, the, oh, that's the blue is remaining. what's left to be funded. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. What? Yeah. See, so we finally had a, a color coded. We had over a million requests. Yeah, there's was 1 million requested. Oh, 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 that's who we didn't fund. Oh, we're at 432,000. That's who we didn't fund. Correct. Oh, whew. So there's still 67,500 left. Okay, who has. Who, uh, is that Patrick? That's your money? Yeah. I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. How much have you? Uh, I've got thirty-five thousand left. No, you left. Have, you have sixty-seven thousand. Five hundred left. There's actually sixty-seven thousand five hundred left. Some of the choices you selected actually didn't have an FY twenty-four request. You put some in there. Didn't have so requests. We had some, some lines on there just to kind of show comparisons from prior years. Of Here's the thing, guys. Can you? Can you? If I could just ask this question. Sure. I, I haven't had the time to, I don't know a lot of these That's things. why I said we just rolled this through last night like we always I, used to do it. I can, I can just throw the darts or well, I, I can, can help give you, you guys $40,000 and next year you give me $40,000. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Come on. I, 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 might like to, I might be able to. I might be able to think. I, let me think about I'll that. Give you ten thousand yeah. each, uh -huh. and next year you give me ten. Well, you got sixty-seven sitting here. But I'll I'll change it so that I've got the drug-free coalition. 60. Is that is that Mac? Did they get their ask? Yeah, I get Jim. It. The reason they're is, short is uh, they're short twenty-five hundred. Yeah, yeah. and Vams, the, the veterans, they're looking for more. I, Definitely looking for more. So the Wait, can you I'm look back? Can you look at it again? If this crisis center helps, oh, yeah, yeah, they're no, going to no. need money next year. Uh, yeah. So that's all I was asking. Um, yeah, I no, could do sixty thousand, give you each ten thousand, <laughs> and next year you give me ten thousand for your project, and then I'll for have the project forty thousand. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Patrick, I had enough trouble getting to a hundred, so I don't need any more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did. I, I, Maybe it's honestly, here. I, I bumped. I gave what I felt was proper based on what they've requested in the past, reading, if you read their things, yep. and I went through every one of them, there's a yep. lot of them so on there that are still asking for operational. Yeah, and, but, and there's a lot of them that are, gonna be, that are one time asked this year. I, I agree, but, but there's a lot asked. that were asking this for operational, yeah. and they were an automatic X because we've told them, don't ask for operational. And the other thing I think we need to do is we need to cap the ask. These ask for 100,000, 150, 160,000 is ridiculous. They shouldn't even be on there. Well. I, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but if it is a capital project, just because they ask doesn't mean they get it. I know, but I'm just yeah. saying that's just too much to ask for the county to do and the taxpayers to do. I get it on, you know, we're looking for return on investment, so. Right. Back I mean, CBEC is looking for 101000 Yeah, well, I gave them 100 I gave all mine to them. Yeah, I know. I want that, you know. I know. I, He's like, ah, Haven Ministries with the home, the home. Right. Hope, do we so. want to make any adjustments to this this evening? No, he, he send him back. Send him back yeah. to the drawing table. Did Chris's look okay? I mean, Chris. 
Commissioner Corcorino, he, he's not here. He's so, so, so let's do this. Um, can you go, can you get with Patrick and let him know which ones he gave money to that didn't ask and scrub that? Yeah. Get, and that's the new number, 67, if you scratch that out? Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. yeah, so get rid of the ones that you funded that didn't ask for money, which, which she's done already. Now you're 67,500. You can stop right there if you want and be done, or you can keep going. Or you could choose what's behind door number three. Or you can take up my offer and I'll give you, you and Jim. I, I, I'm good with what I, I'm good. Jim, you want 40 grand? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it the next. Uh, yeah. Okay. The next, uh, Tough At least we know where we are now. I know you yeah. want to be done with this, but it's, it's important. We got, we got, we got time. Yeah. We, got we time. do. We got time. So uh, one last call. Is there any other agencies you think you would want to see? Well, what, what's the list going down? So. Next, next Thursday? Next yeah, Thursday, Thursday we have uh, Department of Corrections, Board of Education, and Capital Projects. And that's, and we've covered a lot of the capital stuff, you know, tonight yeah. with BBW and right. Parks. Uh -huh. They have the lion's share, so, and if there's any other groups. And Economic Development Tourism is going to be in front of the commissioners at the April 11th regular meeting. Um, so I think Heather was going to probably catch, you know, the couple questions that the, the board had about, um, EDIF, and then she wants to get a rental office front down at the uh, outlet center during the construction phase of the uh -oh. Heritage Center. Is that the outlets? Yeah, they have a little corner unit. It's yeah. pretty, I forget the amount it of rent. It used to be like their information center, yeah. I think. Okay. She's looking for uh, some rental space there just to, potentially it could be a permanent spot for them for, for visibility, but at least during the this next summer. All right. Yeah. So, uh, anybody else that you wanted to have come in? I can't think of it right now. Um, what about Kathy? Did she come in at all? Kathy Willis? Yeah. Uh, we did not have her scheduled, but we can certainly ask I'm her sure, to come in. Let's put it this way. Uh, there are there any heavy enhancements as in more than in a, one employee that anybody wants to? She had employees, but it was related to the YMCA. Right. I know she did. Yeah, I'm saying, right. but is there any other, oh. are there any other enhancements that aren't coming in that anybody has any concerns about? If not, then we could just her say. Department. Really. Well, no, I don't, I don't worry about hers at all. I'm just saying there's there any other ones mm -hmm. from that list that, that we're not bringing in that somebody would want to question. If you don't, then, uh, then, that's, then, then we're good to go. Page seven again. Karen pulled it up. If you want to look at it. Um, See, there it is up top. Two asks. Yeah. From and those that's are YMCA. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was I mean, that was just hers. I'm saying so. Mm -hmm. Animal so Board of Education is coming in. Chesapeake College. We're having the dinner and then the mm -hmm. the fun over there. Community affairs. That was not funded. That okay. So we don't have to worry about that. Admin. We already took care of that one. Um, those were all. Uh, there was all funded. The grant writing one. We that. Uh, Todd, that, you only funded half that. Well, we can we can adjust that. Um, that was originally under the Department of Emergency Correct. Services, yeah. and we were going to pull that out of them and put it under General County Administration, so it covers all the departments, uh, right? And get a, a 1099 a contractor for that service, so that that could be adjusted uh, uh, a bit. Yeah, I I I take it out and put it where, wherever you need think it needs to go, but we definitely okay. want that grant writer. Okay. I mean, that's all, all right. this company does, oh, God, so yeah. I think that would be good yeah. for everybody. All right. Uh, we already did DP, uh, fire marshal engineering. We did general services. We did roads. We did detention centers coming in. Yep. Economic I development. That, I can tell you the detention center. That's largely transitional positions there for them as well. They've got a. They're really really heavy, heavy. on the office upper upper. They're all. I mean, we got the top three um, managers: the warden, the captain, the major. They could. They all have thirty plus years of service. Yeah. Uh, in the organization, and they could. Um, we need to get some people in there to. Be part of that transition. So that that's really the, the you know they need to stay. Piece. That's the key. Yeah. So, um, but that's that's you know. We can can, still have is there any way you could get time frames on their departure? I mean, I know this one was. He said no next set of commissioners. I would, but I would say we're in that same ballpark. Okay. With those with that group of money in EDIF. Better explain. Okay. No, I'm fine. I'm just asking you. Yeah, I figure you know what. Well, she'll be. She'll no, be I didn't know what it is meeting. now. But and she's, explain. Okay. she's coming in for yeah. a general update, so but, she can cover okay. that then. But it's better if she explains it because she gets it to a million. Something. And then extension services. That's the ag extension. Okay. There you go. Is and one more one more page, right? No. 
Now we did, we we have an FEC. They didn't come in the other night, were they? No. No. We so they weren't here. Have them come in. We funded their low sap and uh, their ass. Yep. Human resources, an intern, library. That's what library was here. Okay. Yeah, you you were. Yeah. What did you guys do there? You get you. You went with Todd's proposed, those two so positions? Far, yeah, so okay. far, yeah, so far. So really, parks five and three percent merit increase, that's seven and a half percent. Do we want to bring in the IT guys so they can explain why the dang speaker doesn't work? <laughs> Just for that reason? Then, then a lot of things are going to start breaking. <laughs> then a lot of things are going to start Bruce breaking because all you're going to do is make them mad. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Make a mad joke. And was, there's one more. Uh, this, yeah. this was uh, the, the conservation specialist position for um, Donna Smith, as you recall. Yes. Yeah. So that's another transitional succession okay. planning uh, position there. So I don't know if you want her to come in. I mean, I think you've heard. No. Her, did did she, she handpick this person? I, I don't know if they've got anybody in mind. I'm sure they and, have some candidates in mind, but you know. But so is, that's, a, that's a good point on this one. So that one alone. Uh, this is an individual that's coming in, so Donna can groom. teach her the right way and groom her and, and show her the ins and outs. And then when Donna leaves, that budget's going to reduce because she'll be gone. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a reenactment from the 2012 yeah. budget process. Yeah. Early out parachutes, people took them. We didn't backfill. So that enhancement of six I million dollars. to take that parachute, but she wouldn't. Out of. What's the twelve million? What is the? Uh, we still have increase was twelve million. Still yeah. Mm -hmm. So half of it's on going for enhancements. Half is on enhancements. Okay. Yeah, and keep in mind too, the board of education uh, my enhancement mind. was requested at four point eight million. Yeah. And we funded it. One point nine right now. One point nine. Yeah. About three percent. So. What are we going to get away with? Well, we do expect the. MLE certificate before they come in. I think uh, Jane Towers indicated it was going to be here by the end of this week or early part of next week. So we'll have that MLE certificate. I don't know what that really means to us. It, it, it just, it just gives us another point of reference, but they've told us they need that, that amount of money to continue operating the way they're operating today with the teacher salary increases that yeah. have happened. Yeah. And the state not, and the state cutting us by 800000 Yeah. So that's going to be, you know, the real pain is, you know, you bring, you bring your new teachers in at mandated sixty, and then somebody who's making sixty has been a teacher three years. Well, you then you got to boost them, and it just exponentially just becomes a nightmare. It also becomes a problem with all your other people that work in the school system. That Correct. Don't, sure. Aren't getting that. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the janitorial, the yeah, maintenance and, and, people, and the they've, bus drivers. They've been no, treated. I mean, unfairly, I think, in my from my position, you know, my sure. perspective. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, they're not because the, yeah. they're not in the in the funding formula. They're not in the base, the foundation. So right. there was no not nothing in there for them. Right. It's all in the teachers. They don't have an association. Okay. So we're good just with then uh, corrections coming in in addition to economic development on the eleventh. Or do you want anybody else? No, and that, that is our commissioner meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. That's fine. I'm good. Fine. Yeah. On the 11. Yeah. Okay, so we can wrap up then. So it's think? just going to be you corrections and, and board of ed next week. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then capital. We'll go over all right. the capital stuff. And that's the 11th. All right. That's the 13th. That's, 13th. that's the 13th, yeah. The 11th Thursday. Thursday. Thursday meeting. Yeah, Tuesday's the 11th. 13th is a work session. Right. It's Thursday. Do we have I think the I towns have on the 11th as well? Yeah, that's right. The towns are coming in. Tuesday's our regular scheduled commissioner's meeting. Did anybody? I mean, we put the we put the escalator in there. And a bunch of nobody's barking or crying. Yeah, no, it was yeah. it was very smooth. Yeah, good. At, uh, 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 motion to adjourn. Jack, you were at the tax offset meeting with. Yeah, they were they were all fine, right? I mean, yeah. they're, yes, they're, they're good. They got that little good. escalator we put in there, and it's yeah. all good. We had they agreed everything here. Yeah, so I think they're fine. Okay. Yep. All the motion time. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.